when Isaac meets Rebecca. Genesis chapter 24 verses 42 to 67. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3 to chapter 14 verse 2. And James chapter 4 verses 13 to 17. Introduction. How did you feel when you met your spouse or the love of your life? Our Torah portion starts with the continuation of the story telling of Abraham's servant after he met the family of Rebekah. Laban and Bethuel were convinced that the thing comes from Adonai yod heh vav -Hey. They told the servant to take Rebekah and go to be the wife of his master's son. After he heard the decision of Laban and Bethuel, the servant of Abraham bowed down and worshipped Adonai. He gave Rebekah a silver and gold. He also gave precious things to her brother and mother. The servant and his men celebrated and stayed all night and rose in the morning, and now he approached them to send him away to his master with Rebekah. In return, Rebekah's brother and mother asked a favor to let her stay for another ten days. We can see a similarity between Rebekah and her uncle Abraham when it comes to faith and how they respond to Adonai's plan. When Adonai called Abraham, he was told to get out of his country, from his family and from his father's house and go to a land that Adonai would show him, Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. He went out even without knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt in the land as a foreigner, Hebrews chapter 11 verses 8 to 9. Regarding Rebekah, when she was asked to go with her uncle's servant, she replied, yes. She agreed to be the bride of a man she did not know. But because of the story of her uncle's servant, she believed that everything was the plan of Adonai yod heh vav -Hey and she's willing to be the next mother for the next generation of the line of promise. Hallelujah. So, how did the family of Rebekah dismiss her? They dismissed her with an echo of Adonai's promise. To become a mother of thousands of tens of thousands, it fits to the promise of Adonai to Abraham that his descendants will be numerous. They also blessed Rebekah's descendants to possess the gates of those who hate them and that is to inherit the land of the Canaanites. How about Isaac? Did he have the same faith as his father Abraham? Absolutely yes. Isaac witnessed the faith of his father when they were in Mount Moriah for a burnt offering. He asked his father about the offering and his father said that Adonai yod heh vav -Hey will provide for himself the lamb. This is where we can see the faith of Isaac when he came from the way of Beer Lahai Wa, he meditated. The Hebrew word of meditate is, Hagar, which means, to ponder, imagine, meditate, mourn. From the meaning of the word, maybe Isaac was mourning because he remembered his mother Sarah and also meditating, imagining with a big faith that the servant of his father will bring good news. When Rebekah saw Isaac, she took a veil and covered herself which means she was ready to be the wife of Isaac and the two of them went to the tent of Sarah. This part was very touching because the moment they did, the seed of promised Yeshua, Galatians chapter 3 verse 16, were now in place and this is where Isaac was comforted after Sarah's death. The significance of our story is about the future wedding of Yeshua. Abraham wanted a bride for Isaac from his country and family same as Yeshua in the book of Revelation. He visioned John about his bride the holy city of Yerushalayim descending out of heaven from Adonai. The bride had twelve great and high wall with twelve gates and names written on them which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children Israel. Revelations chapter 21 verse 9 to 12. How about the Goyim? Can we be part of Yeshua's future wedding? In Exodus chapter 12 verse 19, it says that for seven days no leaven is to be found in each house of the Israelites. If any eats with leaven will be cut off from the Kahal congregation of Israel, whether a sojourn at Ger or a native of the land. The context is about the feast of Pesach to unleavened bread and that's the time when Israel becomes separate from the rest of mankind. Also, we can see from the passage that the native Israelite and Ger make up the congregation of Israel so therefore even us elite Gentiles, Torah observant, grafted in the true oiv tree could be part of the future wedding of Messiah Yeshua. 
Ruth chapter 1 verse 16, Your God will be my God, and your people Israel will be my people. Our Haftarah portion has three chapters. In chapter 12, Isaiah speaks about the remorse of Adonai to Israel but has been turned away and that will be the reason for them to praise him for he is their comfort and salvation. Chapter 13 is about Isaiah's prophecy concerning Adonai's message of judgment against the nation of Babylon. Isaiah sees that Adonai will use another nation to destroy Babylon. They will be likened to Sodom and Gomorrah and it will never be inhabited or settled from generation to generation. While the focus of Isaiah's prophecy in chapter 13 is about Babylon's destruction, in chapter 14, Isaiah prophesied the deliverance of Adonai's chosen people from captivity, and his mercy on Jacob, and he will allow again Israel to settle in their own land. Our apostolic portion deals with making decision or planning without Adonai. According to James, claiming that we are in control of what happens can lead to boasting because no one knows what tomorrow may bring. Even King Solomon the wisest man on earth that ever lived said in Proverbs chapter 27 verse 1, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. The bottom line of James' message is in verse 15. If Adonai wills, we shall live and do this or that. As we make our daily plans and goals in life, we must first acknowledge Adonai and ask for his help because he is the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. The connection of our parasha is about the will of Adonai. In Torah, because of the will of Adonai, Isaac and Rebekah finally met and become one. In Haftarah, because of the will of Adonai, his mercy is on Jacob and will still choose Israel and settle them in their own land. In Apostolic, if Adonai wills, we shall live and do this or that. Back to my introduction, it is such a great feeling to finally meet the love of our life. We feel a sense of finally being complete and finding our missing peace. But there is much greater feeling and joy to meet Yeshua and be part of his wedding day. As we await for that special day, let us remain faithful in obeying him and make ourselves ready. Revelation chapter 19 verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. Shabbat Shalom.